trying to find out what happened and when. I'll allow you to continue, Mr. Winthrop, but I must caution you. Watch your presentation. This is so unfair. I, I Victor didn't do anything. Mr. Rodriguez, did you? please tell the court why you and Lorna Devon were separated that evening and why you felt it was perfectly acceptable for her to pour liquor down her I never throat. said it was acceptable. Then why did you watch a woman you so obviously cared for leave a bar in a drunken state with two perfect strangers? But because I was angry. You were angry at Ms. Devon or the two men? Miss Devon. I'm sorry, I missed that. Did you say you were angry at Ms. Devon? Yes, yes, I was angry. Just how angry were you, Mr. Rodriguez? How angry can a man like you get? Order, please. Mothers of America have had a kind of medical training. Nurse? So what, you and Iris, you lose a couple of bucks. That's all right, because you're going to be set until the middle of the next century. That's hardly the point. No, the point is, you get to watch Jerk McKinnon run out the back door with the tail between his legs. Now, that's a great trade-off, isn't it? Unbelievable. You're unbelievable. You actually think we care more about discrediting you than we care about saving our yeah, company? pretty close, I guess, yeah. You couldn't be more wrong. We care about this company because we care about the family. Not, not just the Corey family. Oh. All the families that make this place Amanda, work. let me get out my handkerchief. Oh, you know, you can sneer if you want to, okay? But I know it's true. I grew up here. This building is a very big part of me. And if I lost it... If I lost it... Then I would be losing the best part of myself. The best part of you, Amanda, is right there. Now, listen, I know you got back into teaming up with me, but you did it for all the right we reasons. I mean, you, you saw what Rachel cannot see. What you saw what this company can and should be. Look, if you get a chance to show everybody, your mother included, that you have the right stuff. What about you, Jake? What about saving Corey for the little guy? I still think guy? I can do that. How? You want to see me do it, you're just going to have to trust me. I hate when you say that. Oh, come on. Amanda, give me one hour, one hour with the union guys. That is all I ask. Amanda, what other choice do you have? I'm your last and your best shot. Look, if it's not too big a deal, can I please talk to Mr. Rain alone? I might be able to make this whole little problem disappear. Be my guest. Thank you. Thank you so much. But I'm calling the warden's office, pal. No way am I taking a fall for you. You see? You see that? Nobody wants to take responsibility. A person's home can get torn down just because somebody else turns their back. Will you please listen to me? If you get kicked off the work program, you're going to have to finish your sentence behind bars. What about the life sentence of the people who live here? They, they don't get a work program. They don't even get enough food to eat. Does nobody care about these people? Has, has everybody turned their back on them? No, not everyone. There are some people who still believe they can make a difference. Hi. <laughs> oh, by, by the way, I'm not Vicky. I know. Did you understand the question, Mr. Rodriguez? How angry were you at Lorna Devon? A lot less angry than I am at you right now. There's a question pending. What, are you insinuating that uh, I might have been angry enough to rape? My only objective is to determine who raped Lorna Devon, if indeed she was raped at all. Oh, she was raped, all right, and we all know who did it. Given the obvious hostility of the witness, Your Honor, I have nothing further at this time. But I do reserve the right to recall him. You set me up, Winthrop. You can stand down, Mr. Rodriguez. I won't let anybody do that. Mr. Rodriguez and Well, Lorna and I had a fight. That's true. And it got in the way of us getting together that Mr. night. But Rodriguez, that was that. I have to start you for contempt. What about the truth? Doesn't anyone around here care about that? Do you think if, if I would have let Lorna leave with your brother if I thought he was a rapist? I'll see him in my chair. I will not apologize for telling the truth. Victor, stop. Victor. 
Doctor! I won't let you get away with this, Cass, or your little brother. Order. I will have order. Order, please! Monkey Daddy? Sure, honey. Anyone who needs our help. I've heard about the clinic and the work you're doing. Riley, what about these buildings? Is the city planning to build a low-income housing? Unfortunately, no. A major developer has put in a huge bid for almost the entire waterfront. So, so what about the people who live here? Where, where will they go? Well, luckily, there are shelters, but you see, these people just don't want to go to them. It makes them feel like they're locked up. I can understand that. Ian, I know how you feel. I felt exactly the same way when I first started working at the clinic. Mad as hell. But I learned so much from Jamie Frame and John Hudson. If, if, if you ever want to accomplish anything productive, you really have to channel your energy. Well, you've certainly done that. I hear the clinic is being used as a model for some new facilities around the state. Thanks. Yes, we're very proud of that. So, did you get any work done? I guess not. Bad move, pal. The warden's so ticked off he can't see straight. Oh, boy, I'm worried now. Hey, watch your mouth. He said if you didn't cooperate, I could break the good news myself. And what would that be? Two years upstate. No early parole. But hey, you guys gotta have principles, right? Oh, come on. You can't fault a man for having a heart. Let the doctors take care of his heart, honey. All I care about is the job. Let's go. Wait, excuse me. I don't mean to interfere, but, um, I have an idea. Why are you so against pulling this story? You know what Marley went through. Exactly. Do you have any idea the trauma that a woman goes through in the trial, having to relive the rape, it's almost as if it's happening all over again. Yeah, okay. I'm totally lost. If you have so much sympathy for the victim, why would you want to publicize the trial? Because I learned some very valuable lessons. After Marley was raped, she went into counseling, and I went into family support groups. Do you have any idea how many women Lorna's age experience rape? No. No. The statistical guess is one out of four. One out of four. And how many women do you think actually report the crime? I assume not many. Not many. It's important, it's vitally important that women, all women, know that they have recourse, no matter how painful it is. Now I'm beginning to see what you mean. Until Jenna came in here and told us it was Lorna, I thought... You thought that... that... Cass's brother couldn't possibly do anything so horrible, or, or that maybe it was a mistake, or that Lorna was just behaving like a tramp. Well, something right? like that. Right. I don't know what the world is coming to, Matthew. I used to think that I knew the difference between the good people and the bad people, and that I would never have to soil my hands with anything so hideous as rape. Well, I remember what you, you know, what you did for Marley during that trial. You, you were really there for her. And I made a lot of foolish mistakes. Let's not forget that. Well, you were only trying to help. I don't even know Cass's brother. I mean, if I can be fooled by appearances, I'm sure there's a lot of other women out there who can be, too. I don't even know Cass's brother. I mean, if I can be fooled by appearances, I'm sure there's a lot of other women out there who can be, too. So we will publicize this trial. For every fool like me who only looks at the outside of the package. You're not a fool. You're one of the good guys. And for what it's worth, I'm glad you're my partner. Judge Cohen is getting pretty annoyed, Counselor. That's not going to do either of us any good. Come on, Dana. Rodriguez was your witness. How did I know he was going to fly off the handle oh, like right. that? Right. As if goading and jousting isn't your stock in trade. This is great. What? The way you got Victor all hot under the collar over there, that was great. I pushed him pretty hard. Well, it worked. And those people on the jury, I think, are starting to wonder whether Victor might have been the rapist. Yeah. Well, that's the point. I know. Oh, come on, Cass. 
It's not like it mattered when you went after him. Everybody knows Victor couldn't have been the rapist. Oh, really? And how do you figure that? Sperm test. It confirmed that Lorna and Victor had sex when they said they did, hours before the rape. We only know all of that because the condom broke. Now, what if Victor returned later and used a condom that didn't break? You really think that Victor did it? Everything I say, every question I ask is designed to elicit doubt in the minds of the jurors. But if the jury thinks that Victor did it, then... Then it couldn't have been you. Right. The name of the game is reasonable doubt. But in order to show that, I have to trash a woman whose only mistake was getting drunk and forgetting her street smarts. Well, even if I'm acquitted, Cass, your friends might still believe I'm guilty. That's a distinct possibility, kid. Carl, for God's sake, do you think it's going to do her any good to have the jury see her with her old friend? It's not against the law for Lorna to know me, Felicia. That is debatable. Anyway. Mother, please, I can handle this. Will you get me some coffee? Thank you. I don't know how you found out about this, Carl. Well, I have many friends in the judiciary. Right. Well, you have made your obligatory appearance. You're off the hook. I wasn't on the hook. But this isn't for show. Give me a few minutes of your time. It's crucial that we speak. That's Spencer, Tommy. Oh, good. I can't wait to hear this, please. Well, you should, no matter what you <clears throat> think of him. He's a very smart man. Now, first, never meet an opponent on his own turf. Secondly, and this is a very big, important one, always use the element of surprise to your own advantage. It mm -hmm. could make you millions. You should know. My point. Exactly. Hey, guys, hello. I've got coffee and donuts. No, we're not here for food, McKinnon. Fine, yes, sir, if you want it. Ah, uh, Amanda, you know Hector from the printing department? Yes, right? of course. Hello, Hector. So, why don't we all have a seat? Amanda, I know you're a very busy woman. We will talk to you later. Jake! I am not going to blow this. <clears throat> Amanda's a very smart, savvy woman, and as many of you, as you, of you know, very compassionate. Yeah, okay, Mr. Jerk McKinnon. What kind of scam are you trying to pull on us now? <laughs> Eileen, you're starting to sound a lot like the Corys. Okay, look, I am taking a very big gamble with you people. Probably one of the biggest gambles of my life. The only thing is, can I pull it off? Well, if we're going to go ahead with this coverage, I think I should be the one who handles it. Hello, Matt Corey. Yeah. What? You kidding me? Yeah, yeah, okay. I guess we don't have any choice. Uh, I'll arrange the in-courtroom feed right into our booth. Uh-huh, yeah, and Rebecca, make sure you get their rate. Okay. Thanks. What rate? What's going on? You know, trial TV, right? Well, with all the publicity and the trial and everything, they're going to pick it up as early as today. Matthew. And we're going to have to cover it. You're doing the right thing. I know you are. Oh, I hope so. I'm going to talk to the news department, make sure they protect Lorna's identity. Trial TV uses that blue dot to cover the victim's face. No. I'm going to make sure they don't mention her name either. I'm not going to let KBA wide let her down. Not now. Not while I'm in charge. Excuse me, while well, we are in charge. Matthew Corey, you're a good friend. I try. What information have you dug up now? Well, unfortunately, I have nothing on that little worm in there that will help you win your case. If it existed, you'd already have it. Thanks. Well, then, what do you want? <laughs> Lorna, I've never... I've, I've never been much of a counselor to you. When I was with you, Carl, that's all that you were. Lorna, pay attention. Lorna, learn by example. Lorna, learn. No, no, Lorna. I mean a good counselor. I was always... 
I was always more of a Svengali. But that was then. And this is the new you? Yes. Perhaps, yes. Now, one of the reasons I was first drawn to you was because I sensed in you an innate strength and intelligence. You're a very capable young woman, Lorna. You're capable of, of much more than you know. Well, this is some test. Believe me. It's one you'll pass with flying colors. After all, you managed to survive me, did you not? Barely. Of course you did, your intelligence. And that little weasel in there is no match for you, you remember that? Then why did I fail? No, baby. No, you know, you did no such thing. That animal in there took advantage of you in an inebriated state, right? Well, that makes more of cowardice. Advantage of you in an inebriated state, right? Well, that makes more of cowardice than your failure. I have to go. Mr. Churchill believed in victory in spite of terror. You keep that in mind. Baby. You okay? You okay? I'm fine. Did he upset you? No, no, not at all. Okay. I'll tell you later. All right. What happened to you? Did the judge throw the book at you? No, not exactly. I mean, I tried to explain my, uh, our relationship. She said I could remain as a spectator as long as I kept my mouth shut. You do that. I hope, um, this doesn't sound like I'm being a worry wart, but, uh, if Victor had a hard time on the witness stand, what am I going to do? Oh, what if honey, I was no, that? you're going to be fine. Yeah. You will. And, right. you know, now that we know these dirty tactics that Cass is doing, I think we all are better prepared, yeah. don't you? Are we all ready now? Yes. Yeah, yeah, Jenna. Don't worry. I'm going to be there with you every step of the way, all right? Thank you. Okay. Come on. Thank you, Dana. Come on, baby. All rise. The Honorable Francine Scott Cohen presiding. Be seated. Before we begin, I would like to state for the record that there will be no more disturbances in this courtroom. Counselors will advise their clients and their witnesses of proper procedure. What the hell is this? Your Honor, a moment, please. Yes, Miss Kramer? The people were not informed that these proceedings were to be televised. Neither was the defense, Your Honor. I can't speak for Ms. Kramer, but I can't imagine either one of us want to be salacious fathers. The decision fathers was or... made earlier this morning, Counselor. This is a public courtroom, and barring any further outbursts, I find this case sufficiently important to allow the media access to the proceedings. <sighs> Aside from court records, her proper name will not be released or publicized. You can't guarantee that, Your Honor. In fact, there is every I chance that some... I do guarantee that, Miss Kramer. And unless the press wants charges brought against them, they will comply. Now, call your next witness. The state calls Jenna Norris. So, Miss Norris, the last you saw of the victim was when she left Sassy's in the company of Dr. Winthrop and his friend Kyle Barkley at approximately 8 p.m. Is that correct? That's correct. Thank you, Miss Norris. Your witness, counsel. Hello, Jenna. I know how difficult this is for you, so I will try to make this as brief as I possibly can. Okay? When you were at Sassy's the night in question, did you notice that the complainant was drinking? Yes. <clears throat> how many drinks would you say she consumed that night? Wait, are you implying that if someone drinks, they deserve to get raped? No, of course not. I'm simply trying to establish how much... Her memory might have been affected by what she consumed. Her memory is perfect. How many drinks did she have? I don't know. I didn't Would count. it surprise you to know that the bartender said he served her at least five, possibly six cocktails that night? 
so what? She can hold her liquor. Can she? I understand she tripped at one point, spilling the entire contents of her handbag all over the barroom floor. Do you remember that? No, she didn't trip. She, she um... What? I don't know. Maybe that happened when she reached into her purse to buy another round for the boys. Does that jog your memory? Not really. Then maybe you'll remember having seen her entire contents of the purse strewn all over the barroom floor. Ring a bell? No, I'm sorry. It might have happened. I didn't see it. Jenna, don't lie for me. Just tell the truth. What? Order, please. Order in this courtroom, please. There will be order in this courtroom. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, Mr. Wagner says that the building next door is actually in worse shape than this one, and since they had scheduled to do work over there anyway, why don't you get started? Oh, Marley, thank you. No, don't thank me. It's Mr. Wagner's project. You were lucky this time, pal. But don't tell me how to do my job again. You got that? Okay, come on, guys. He's just, uh, you know, Joe trying to do his job, and just like everybody else, keep it. Just like these people are trying to hold on to their homes. But they aren't going to be able to hold on to their homes if the buildings come down. Well, maybe they will be able to if there's an injunction against the demolition, and there are groups that are trying. Like the man said, I can't help from my cell. You already have. And risked staying in that cell. Well. <laughs> oh, um, actually, I, I have to run, so take care. Oh, thanks again, Marley. Thank you. Oh. What's that for? Because it's dangerous to care about you, and it, it just scares me to death. You know, maybe you should become a parole officer. You can keep guys like me in check just by nagging them to death. Ian, I'm not kidding. I don't regret anything that happened, but my family has been through a lot of heartache because of us. And you want to prove to them that it's worth it? Yeah, I do. Is that such a crime? Hardly. It may be one of the smartest things you've said in months. Listen, I can keep you in here talking about the party line until I'm blue. Hey, we've line. heard it before. I know that, Hector. That's why I'm not going to waste your time. Now, listen, I know you gave Rachel yeah, some of your wages But we back. don't know you from a hole in the wall, mister. Sure you do. I'm cut from the same cloth you are. Just I don't need to tell you that my father worked in a coal mine or how hard my mother worked or that I'm doing this for a better life because I know that's exactly what you're doing or you wouldn't be threatening a strike. You trying to say you're on our side? No, I don't want to be on your side. I want to be on a winning side. And the thing is, if we work together, that can happen. Now listen, my... My mother used to tell me a story story about the golden goose, and the moral was that, uh, well, if you killed the goose, all you, all you got was a big bird dinner, right? But if you took care of it, and if you let the goose lay the golden eggs, well, then you could eat breakfast like a king for the rest of your lives. What about the princess? She's a lot more than a princess. This is the same woman that fought her mother to save every one of your jobs. This is a lot about her. Well, that's it from me for the time being, so, uh... Talk amongst yourself, take a vote. Future Cory is in your hands. What? The Golden Goose? Order, please. Miss Norris, do you understand what perjury is? Yes. Do you need to be reminded of the consequences of committing that crime before this court? No, Your Honor. Good. Then answer Mr. Winthrop's questions truthfully. Are you all right? Let's go back to that evening at Sassy's. What exactly fell out of the purse of the complainant? 
everything, including condoms. I'm sorry, I missed that last part. I said condoms. Condoms. How many were there? Three, six, and even dozen? I don't know. I didn't count. Just like you didn't count her drinks. Objection. Once again, the counsel is baiting the witness. Sustain. Mr. Winthrop, get to the point. Did you notice any embarrassment when the condoms Objection. fell out? Objection. The witness can't know what the victim felt. Didn't the complainant, in fact, maybe to cover her embarrassment, say... I like to be prepared. She didn't know what she was saying. Objection. Was Hearsay. Calling for conclusion. Leading the witness. Your Objection honor. Objection sustained. The jury will disregard all questions and answers from Mr. Winthrop's mention of the complainant's alleged embarrassment. I'll move on. When did you arrive at the complainant's apartment? A little after 11. Was anyone there? Yes, Victor Rodriguez. Do you have any idea why Mr. Rodriguez would be at that apartment alone late at night? No, I don't know. What was the condition of the apartment? It was a mess. I see. As if uh, maybe a fight had taken place there or even a rape? Objection. Ms. Norris is not an expert in the area of crime scene investigation. Withdrawn, Your Honor. What did you and Mr. Rodriguez do at the apartment, Ms. Norris? We cleaned up the mess. By mess, I assume you mean pizza boxes, beer cans, that sort of thing. Yes. Why? I beg your pardon? At that late hour, why would you clean up someone else's apartment? Because. Because. Please, tell the court why, Ms. Norris. Because it was, you know. No, I don't know. That's the whole point. Why would Victor Rodriguez participate in cleaning up a crime scene? Objection! Your Honor, Mr. Winter continues to waste the court's time in improperly framed questions. I beg your pardon, Your Honor. Why would anyone want to clean up a crime scene? We didn't know that it was a crime scene. It was the guy she'd never... Are you saying there was a problem between the complainant and the guy she brought home? What do you know that we don't know? That's just it. She didn't know these guys. They were strangers to her. And she lured them home? Objection! You were embarrassed by her behavior, weren't you? Isn't that what you're trying to say? Isn't that why you cleaned up the apartment so no one would know? Objection! Sustain, Mr. Winthrop! The jury will disregard that last question. I have nothing further for this witness. Due to the lateness of the hour, the court will recess until tomorrow. All rise. For what? Oh, come on, you have to admit that I did save your butt today. We'll see. Anyway, I just returned the favor. Did you see the man who just left? Yeah, well, was he some union guy? In a way, in a way. He's the national distributor for Brava. I was thanking him for making sure that the last issue went out with the right cover. Yes, Jake. Only the in-house employees saw the jerk McKinnon cover. Iris and I got the master in time to save it. Wait a minute, you let me think <laughs> Come on, how could we resist? <laughs> You're right. You're right, I, I probably would have <clears throat> done the same thing. So, I owe you one. What do you say we have uh, dinner and some champagne? Sorry, can't. I'm busy. And if I were you, I would wait on the champagne until all the union votes are in. It's going to be a long night, bucko. Come on, you're not going to admit that I did a, did a good job here? Did, did pretty good? Oh, no, pretty well. And yeah, for a jerk, you won't have bad. See you in the office. I can't believe that you expect us to give out Christmas bonuses, Donna. Why not? There are a lot of people around here who deserve it, including the two of us. Mm -hmm. Well, we're dead last. You know that. Matthew, don't be modest. You worked extremely hard around here. At the no. very least, I will give you something. What's that scent you're wearing? Cologne? You're going to give me cologne? It's torture. I'll say. I mean, I smelled it somewhere in a magazine. That, that scent. What are you doing? Oh, Lorna, we just found out about what's going on. It is such a thrill to be able to air my dirty laundry on KBAY yet again. Tell me, did you happen to send Morgan Winthrop a thank you bouquet of flowers? All right. I know what you're going through, Cass. I can't possibly imagine. No, I can't. They've ostracized you. They've made you feel as if you don't belong. 
Listen, I knew this didn't belong on our station. I wasn't trying to use you. I was only telling Donna a couple hours Matt, ago. hold it. I am mad because my life in hard times are... Because my life in hard times are going to be used as a lead feature for the evening news. But damn it, Matthew, I chose to come forward with this for a reason. We saw tonight's broadcast and how you tried to mask her identity. We thought that that was very tastefully done. No, it wasn't. I don't... I am not a member of the Witness Protection Program. Yeah, well, that was done to protect you. Well, she's past that. Matt. Everybody is telling me how great it is that I'm coming forward with this. Why are you covering my face? I want every woman, every woman out there to know that I didn't do anything wrong. The person who is raped is innocent. My friends don't seem to know what's happened to me. They look at me like I'm an extraterrestrial. They love you, but they cast you out. Yeah, I know the story. But you'll get them back. When this is all over, they will accept you again. Oh, I don't know. Some of them, some of them I've lost for good, I know that. <laughs> Why don't you go home, kid? I got a lot to think about tonight. Okay. I am innocent, you know? I know. But in order to prove that, tomorrow, I have to destroy a human being. It was me up there, Matt. Blood and blood. Morgan Winthrop didn't rape a blue dot, he raped me, Lorna Devon. So you tell it that way, pal. Because you're going to let the whole world know that Lorna Devon is not going to be beaten down again or raped again, especially by the media. Now, tomorrow, my face is going to air on the airwaves or else we are through. Do you understand? Matt, it's coming to your town, to your... Chris Wood, people across the country and around the world mark World AIDS Day. Tonight on Newswatch 10, you'll meet a courageous woman who's battling the disease. And police want your help in finding a swindler. Join us at 5.30 and 6.